Hey guys, welcome to video number nine in our Python adventure. And I've been waiting for this video for a while. I've been looking forward to this because this is where we're going to actually write programs. Now, with all the previous videos in the series, we've been executing individual commands. We've been going over the, ver the very basic aspects of the Python language. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to execute a Python script. And then from, for every video going forward, we're gonna write actual Python scripts. Now we may still use the Python shell from time to time. It is a useful shell, and it is a useful thing to use whenever you want to test a particular command or function without having to write a script. Sometimes you'll just kind of use it just to test various aspects of the language. But when you write an a actual Python program, it's going to be written in a text editor, and then Python is going to execute that program. So let's go ahead and dive right in and write a script. Now, I'm here on my terminal, and what we need to do now is choose a text editor. Now, it doesn't really matter which text editor you use. I'm going to use Nano, but you can actually use a GUI text editor. It doesn't have to be a command line text editor. If you're a fam fan of Vim, you can use that. You could use whatever it is you like, and whenever I edit a file, you can just use your text editor if you're not using the one that I'm using. But if you're following along with me, we're gonna use Nano because that's a very easy text editor. It's N-A-N-O and it's available on every Ubuntu install and most Linux distributions actually ship this text editor by default. If I press enter, it gives me a blank window where I can just start typing stuff. So obviously uh, that's not sensible, but you know, you get the idea, you get a blank window, you can start typing. If you give it a file name, you start editing that particular file name. You see the file name up here at the top. And if I want to save it, I just do control O and then enter. It wrote zero lines because of course there's nothing in here, but then control X exits out. And if I do LS, you actually can see right here that I have the file that I creatively called file name. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that. Anyway, uh, that's how you basically open the nano editor, and that's what we're going to be using, but I'm going to walk you through the process of writing your very own Python script. So what we wanna do is actually use nano, and we wanna edit a file called sample script.py. .py is the um, generally agreed upon extension for a Python script, although it will still work even if you don't give it an extension because we're going to be using Python to exit it, or execute it. But we wanna try to make it as obvious as we can that this is a Python script. So .py is basically what you're going to see when you see a Python script in the, the wild and it's what we're going to use in this series. So if I press enter, now we have the text editor where we can start typing and our file name is sample script.py. Now the first line is actually optional, but we definitely want to include it. It has several names such as hashbang, but basically it's the interpreter line of a script which starts with a numeral symbol or a pound sign and an exclamation mark. And then we're gonna do user bin env space python3. And we basically want to use a Python 3 executable because that's you know what we're using. That's We want to use Python 3 because that's the future. That's the current version of Python. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and press enter twice, but notice that it starts with a hash symbol, which you would be forgiven if you thought that this was a comment. But this is the first line in the file, so the interpreter actually does pay attention to this. And it's looking at what the interpreter is for the script that we are writing. And at this point, it, it's not even a Python thing. This is you know, basically all across the board. Even if this was a bash script, we, we would still have the same thing, a hash bang at there at the very beginning of the file. So moving on from there, I'm going to basically add another new line here, and we're just, just gonna add a Python statement. Something simple, I'll type print Python is awesome. So nothing too amazing here. We have our first Python statement in a script file, and I'm gonna do control O to write the file, enter to confirm that, control X to exit out, 
and we are brought back to our bash shell. So if I do ls-l, you see that I actually do have the sample script right there. But we can't execute it. Normally what we would do is dot forward slash, then the file name, sample script.py. That's not gonna work though, permission denied. And this is the permission string right here. I'm not gonna get into that because this isn't a bash or Linux tutorial. I do have a series of tutorials already that goes over all of this stuff. But the takeaway here is we need to make it executable. The X means executable, and we can see that the character X is actually missing from the string altogether. So to add it, what we'll do is chmod plus X, because we're adding it, and we're gonna add it to sample script. Go ahead and clear the screen. And then what we can do now, and this will work, is dot forward slash, and then sample script or whatever we called it. I'll press enter. And you can see that it actually printed something. Now notice, I didn't enter the Python shell here. I just executed a script in Python executed. So this is the start of a beautiful thing where we write actual programs that we can execute right on our terminal. Now, if this wasn't executable, like for example, if I do chmod minus x on the file name, if you recall, I'm not gonna be able to run it because it's not executable. But what I can still do is Python 3, and then the name of the file, even though it's not executable, it actually will run. And that's because we are calling the Python 3 executable, and we're telling it to run the contents of this file. So if I do which on Python 3, we can see that it's user bin Python 3, which is the same as actually typing that out. So user bin Python 3 sample script, does the same thing, but because the shell has user bin in the path, we are actually able to just type Python 3 in the name of the script and go ahead and execute that. All right, so if you prefer a GUI editor for your code, if you prefer not to use the command line, which I understand, uh, there is a GUI option available that I can recommend to you. If you are running Debian or Ubuntu, for example, you can do sudo apt install genie and also genie plugins and you can install those two packages right there which will give you a graphical utility for your code i already have that installed so i'm not going to install that again but let's go ahead and open it and see what it looks like so this right here is genie one of my favorite graphical utilities for editing text files including scripts and what we can do is we can open that file that we just created, in our case, sample script.py. And we can see here that we have the code we, that we wrote in nano, same thing, user bin environment Python 3 for the hash bang and then that one Python statement. Now what I really like about Genie that makes it really cool is you can simply press F5 on your keyboard and it's gonna open a terminal and execute the code. So basically all you have to do is just, you can make some changes to, the, to your code and to periodically test it, just hit F5. And you can see the output right here. Text might be kind of small, but you get the idea. We can continue to develop our code and we can execute it right here from the same editor. So you might find that useful. But that's basically all there is to it for this video. I just wanted you to know how we go ahead and create a script. We know now that we create a file with a .py extension. We can use any text editor for that. We can use nano, which I showed you at the, near the beginning of the video. If you're a fan of Vim, we can use that. And then if you prefer a graphical utility, we have Genie, which I just showed you. So you can feel free to add your own Python statements to the script, go ahead and execute it, and just practice creating files, executing them, and then we should be good to go to move on to the next video. Thank you so much for watching my video, guys. I really appreciate it. If you wanna help me out, go ahead and check out my sponsor and my cloud server provider, Linode. Linode now features a new and improved dashboard, their cloud manager, that makes it an absolute breeze to set up your own Linux server. They even have Arch Linux, how cool is that? And of course they have all the staples such as CentOS, Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, and more. And it's very easy to set up a server near you. In fact, 
Linode currently has nine worldwide data centers, with two more set to appear this year in India and Canada. So definitely check them out, guys. I appreciate them as a sponsor. I appreciate you guys as a viewer. So thanks again for watching. Subscribe to my channel. I will have more content coming for you very soon. Stay tuned.